save mother. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Let me cook. Let me cook. You were supposed to have me on at nine. What's up? With that? You gonna do some sideways ish like bump me for Shaq? I can't believe <laughs> I accepted this damn interview. Why you wearing that ugly ass hat? And that suit look like it need to be stuck on somewhere in the rack. <laughs> <laughs> you not so fire. Yeah, I said it. You not so fire. I feel like I'm talking to a walking, breathing hot dog off of Oscar Myers. <laughs> No, no, no. See, see, these young men might not know. Um, these young men might not know how I get down off the tizzy. But you inviting me, that means that you know the history and you a student of the culture. Either that or dumbfounded was busy. <laughs> 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 but yeah, all jokes aside, it's nothing but respect. Um, you an amazing person. That's facts, eh? In fact, if I was still battling, they probably call me the Asian version of past day. Hey. Uh, 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 <laughs> yes. Hey, listen. Woo! What a you great night. Me, let's see. You owe me a birthday present. You owe me a Christmas card. You owe me a you owe me a gift on Hanukkah. You owe me something on Kwanzaa. Definitely Chinese New Year's. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I think there's probably only if we're talking NBA players, there's probably only three that I would have been cool with getting bumped by. One was Shaq, right? So when you said, yo, I got Shaq about the log on, I'm like, all right, cool. The second one, of course, in my opinion, the GOAT GOAT, MJ, 23, right? That's right. Yep. And the third one, greatest point guard of all time, Jeremy Lin. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 so... If as long as as long as whoever I was getting bummed by was one of those three guys, I'm cool with it, man. But yo, but shout out to Shaq though. I was watching, man. How 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 Shaq? How'd you get Shaq on, man? That was that was dope. Ah, oh, I I just call him Shaq. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just just amazing, man. My, yo, like we gotta start a GoFundMe for Shaq so he can get some 5G at the crib. For real, man. Holy mo, that boy that boy was lagging, eh? He was buffering the whole time. Uh yeah, nah. You know what? You know what caught me off going? He was like, Best day, I'm a huge fan. Where are you from? Canada, right? <laughs> uh yo, Patch Day, Patch Day's face is Canada. But anyway, we go we go it's late. Shaq is probably tired. You know, he's doing all type of crazy activities. So we'll we'll omit we'll omit that question. I'm a huge fan, Patch Day. Where you from, Canada? Come on. <laughs> where you from? Asking Pat Stay where he from? No. <laughs> uh, ladies and Wait. gentlemen, tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know. I don't know who are the, the you know, you got, you got a couple heads in here. I don't know what, I don't know what age range these kids are. So, you know, I know, you know, I, I see the amusing aspect of, of doing this interview as tantrum. I don't know if they if they would I don't know if they would latch on to that. Shout out to Tantrum. Shout out to oh, yeah. Dumbfounded. Shout out yeah. to you know all the you know if we're talking about the 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 Asian Mount Asian Mount Rushmore battle rap. I mean there you go. That's definitely two phases that go on there. Um, and of course you know I'm I'm I don't ever want to be that guy that's like yo I'm on the Mount Rushmore. But if there was an Asian Mount Rushmore like somewhere on the side of the actual Mount Rushmore. You know, your boy might, you know, might get an honorable mention. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Bro, that that upsets me to even, like, that, that kills my mood to even say an Asian Mount Rushmore. Bro, oh, you, I, you know, I say that. I say that. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I say that. Come, come on, man. You, man, you, you, were, you were a pioneer in this shit. Bro, Sharon said, have you seen Sharon Freestyle by any chance? Of course. I'm, I'm familiar with Sharon's work. I'm, I'm familiar with his pedigree. And then on top of that, um, like, as recent as last year, I caught, um, I was able to connect with him when we was filming for Wild and Out. So I did like two seasons of Wild and Out. And yeah, I mean, me and him was definitely, you know, back and forth, back and forth in terms of just, you know, picking each other's brains. And uh, yeah, he, you know, he, he gave me his, he gave me my flowers and, and, and I'm humbled as always, you know what I mean? And it, it, he's, he's a good, he's a good dude, man. 
Oh yeah, no, like yeah, he, he you're the reason he freestyles. You, you know, you're you're the reason why a lot of people battle rap and you know jumped out of their comfort zone or like you know what I mean. You're probably the reason why um, just a lot of shit, man. And and and, I, and I'm really proud, but I'm I'm so honored to meet you, and I mean that. And I, I like to you know thank you so much for coming on. You've done oh, no so doubt, man. you've done so much for the culture, man. Like I've always been a big fan, like. Anyone watch like back in the day watching 106 in Park? When you come on, it's like man, it's like. Well, was I wrong in my in my, in my title seven times? Did you win more than seven times? No, I was seven. So at the time, at the time, um, this was early on. So prior to me, there was actually another uh, contestant that I guess made the run and got retired. That's what they would call it, right? On on the Freestyle Friday platform, and that was Poster Boy. So Poster Boy was the first person to really like set that 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 bench. I don't know if they had seven as the number already when he started, or if he just you know he just kept winning, right? So he won again and again, and then on his seventh week is when they were like, "All right, we putting him in the Hall of Fame, so to speak." So he set that mark, I guess. And then I was the one following him. Uh, I didn't battle him, meaning like when I came on, it was already another reigning champion. But here's like a little uh, fun fact: is that when I came on, I was the challenger. And the guy that was the champion, he was going for the seventh. So that's kind of another little, Ooh. you know, interesting footnote in, in, in the overall story. So I'm coming on as the challenger. Um, the champion is already like six time winning. So, of course, the audience, uh, both in the studio and at home, they're familiar with him already. And, uh, you know, I think everyone had the idea that, you know, this week seven for him, this is almost like a giveaway, especially when they saw me coming out. Right. Like, yo. This is how this is how he's going to breeze into the Hall of Fame. And that, to be honest, um, was was even more fire for me because I knew like, man, I because I don't know if you remember the old vintage format of it. It was only a one rounder and it was only 30 seconds. Yes. And, and, and if we do the math. Right. And if we do, you know, if we're like scientists about this, um, this is not acapella, by the way. This is a, on, on beat. Right. So if we do the math scientifically, as soon as the beat drops, if you if you jump on on that one beat, meaning as soon as the DJ drops it and you go into your first setup right there, you're able to get like 12 bars off. You're able to get a solid setup, punch, setup, punch, and you could get 12 off. So in my mind, like I was, I got to say, I was that meticulous about it. I was like, I only have 30 seconds. I have no rebuttals, which is why I feel like that first week was kind of the real you know, the real hurdle. Um, but, you know, not to say the following weeks didn't present their own challenges, but that first week, I knew, like, whatever I say, it had to be so, like, potent that yeah. if if he ends up winning, I have nothing to say. You know what I mean? I could just be like, about yeah, bah. But here's the thing. Sometimes the stars align, and, and this is how it unfolds. When it was his turn, it was almost like he didn't even allow it to be a debatable. He didn't even allow it to go to the judges. Um, yo, cause he stopped like halfway, like, you know, like, like, like 12, 13 seconds left. He just, and, and, and I say this man with, with a lot of admiration and respect for him. So, um, you know, his name is Hassan and, and actually following that, me and him, but, um, it just, it just goes to show you, man, these little moments that can alter the course of all of our lives, you know? So, uh, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Because then, because then you go on to being with Rough Riders. Yeah, so from there, I mean, the, the abridged version of it is, so I win that week uh, as the challenger. So then the following week, I become the champ. And then, you know, every Friday, a new guy comes to dethrone me. And then by the time I win my seventh, um, the crazy thing is, and I've shared this in interviews too, but it, it, it never gets repetitive to me at least, by like week four, so by like week four or five, I kind of already had locked in with Rough Riders already. So it was the game plan, you know, and, and I give them a lot of credit for having that type of belief. They were like, so our vision is after you go all the way and win seven, um, you just announce that you, you know, you, you signed with us, you know what I mean? And I was like, okay, if you, if you, if you believe in it like that, then let's rock it out like that, you know? Yeah. I remember it, bro. I remember it. I was like, that now, was how like. Old are you? Uh, how old are you, Pat? I'm 34. Okay, yeah, we're, we're not that far off. So at the time, I was, yeah, I was like 19. I was like 20. I was 20. So you were probably like 17, like high school, right? 17, 18, I would think, roughly, something. Sharon was probably, Sharon was like nine or eight, probably. Now he was an embryo. <laughs> he was an embryo, yeah. That kid probably had rebuttals as an embryo. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was the only embryo with rebuttals in in, in, yeah. in the uh, in the maternity ward. He was he was rebuttaling the nurse. Yeah. When the nurse, no, he... when the nurse was when the nurse was checking if his mom was dilated or not. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had he had a four bar scheme for that probably. Anyways. But yeah, man, yeah. time flies. Yo, so let me let me reverse, let me kind of reciprocate, you know, that sentiment back to you. Salute, congratulations on. I mean, obviously on this. I know that in the past week or so, past two weeks, you've really been pouring into your um, social media and specifically with this 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 platform right here. But beyond this, man, yo, the last. I mean, you kind of you you by no means are you new on the scene. Um, you go as far back as the early, early king of the dot. I mean, I've seen it. I watched it. I'm talking before there was venues, right? Like before there was pay-per-views. So I definitely have seen that evolution. But the crazy thing about in your case is, you know, some people's evolution, they might start at like, um, let's say 100, right? It's full tilt. Some people start at 20 and then they, they, they evolve into 100 or 150. But if you ask me honestly, you know, just to give you your flowers, I think even my first recollection of you, if, if 100 is full tilt, in the earlier stages, I felt you was already like 65, 70. But then as the years went by, now you're just at like 300. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, right? Like meaning, in, I, even, I totally do. you get what I'm saying? Even in your early yeah. stages, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, yo, he has a lot to work on in this area or he has a lot to work on in this area. It was already like, you see the, the, the blueprint for what you became now, which is, man, a, a beast, you know what I mean? Definitely. It, it means a lot. I, I seen in the interview you said that you enjoy watching me. And to me, like, that was huge to me. You know, I posted it. I was like, man, this is crazy. You know what I mean? I, it, it, I appreciate <laughs> you. I know I do, man. I'm not one of, like, a lot of battle rappers, and for some reason they think, like, they're above everyone or they're, or they're just like, it's too cool to – Whatever, where I'm like, man, it's 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 like heartwarming to 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 get props from you, yeah. from to, to any of my peers, or any people that I looked up to, and and you know what I mean, and and so thank you, I appreciate that very well, much. To add on to add on to that statement, that that notion that you just shared, I definitely think that there's been there's been evolution, even in that regard. Meaning, yeah, you're right. Ten years back, fifteen years back, there definitely was this this sentiment where it's like, yo, even if I know he's nice as hell, I, I can't, I can't, I can't exude that, that, uh, you know, that, that vibe to him, right? Because God forbid one day we have to battle, he might flip that on me, right? So I'm he's saying like, I, but you, yeah, I think that as the years went by, I mean, for sure, for sure now is, is more of a, uh, like you and Shaq was talking about, right? Like Shaq, like Shaq was saying, if, if we use the basketball analogy, you know, when Westbrook and Harden or James and whoever are on the court, Yo, it's, yo, it's like, I'm, I'm going to rip your throat out. But outside of that, it's like, you know what I mean? But I yeah. think the other thing is, it also boils down to just personality types. Like, even within this, within the battle culture realm and the guys that are currently active, right? Because that's the thing I'm very conscious of, you know what I mean? I've, I've spoken to, if you name someone off the top of your head, I probably have crossed paths and interacted with them. I'm talking about that within the battle realm right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I've had multiple conversations with them. And of course the reoccurring question they have for me is always just, yo, when you getting back in? And, you know, like, and they might have this, they might have this hunch that I'm somewhat detached from it. And I always tell them I'm detached in the, in the sense of being in the pit for sure. But if you're talking about detached in terms of not knowing what it's evolved and become, oh, then you're definitely inaccurate there. I'm very aware. And that's exactly the reason why I haven't jumped in the ring because I'm so conscious of, how much it's grown and evolved. And I'm not talking about like the pay-per-views and, and, and all of that. I'm, I'm talking about just the pure, the simple art of it. You know what I mean? Like um, all of the, anything you could mention about what is part of battling right now, I would say I, I'm pretty well versed on and, and I'm pretty like keen on like, you know, if you talk about like angling and, 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 and projection and, and pacing, like I know it's really different. Like it's it's different from five years ago. It's it's definitely even different from ten years ago, right? And so you know, because the thing is, I, I I don't know. I chatted with I chatted with Sharon about this. I've chatted with Clips about it. I've chatted with all these guys about it, right? Because it's just a natural topic that we can yeah, 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 of course, yeah. yeah, it's a natural topic. But even the um the 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 main thing we always talk about is that you know obviously now it's more acapella, 
you know, acapella based, right? I know they have leads that are actually the dudes be on stage with the Janet Jackson headphones. <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. be, and dope. They be, and it's fire. So I know that that's there. But for the most part, if you talk about like whether it's URL, RBE, KOTD, like it's, it's still rooted in acapella. And then the other thing is also that for sure, for sure, I think the biggest shift from when I was still active, active and right now is maybe back then, you know, it was like the emphasis was, yo, we're going off the top right now. But everybody had their written that they would pull out here and there. Yeah. And I think that's the complete 180 switch, which is right now it's actually yo i'm battling pat three months from now shoot i'm gonna write the most impeccable fire flawless three four five rounds and then when i go there on the spot i'm gonna have that but in between in front behind i might also weave in and out some rebuttals and some off the yeah. tops right so I'm, I'm totally aware of that and i think um even if i don't know if you were gonna ask it or not but i'll dive into it right now i mean I, 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 I remember vividly talking with Clips about it in, in the car, and you know, all in the Uber, is that I know if I, if I were to step in, if, when, and where that were to happen, it would be a pretty um, intense uphill battle in terms of conditioning uh, as far as getting that pen game right for it. Like, for me, I'm not that, like, I'll tell you what I feel good about. I'm not worried about the performance aspect. I'm not worried about... You're a breath. fucking... You're a oh sorry, but I didn't mean no, to no, swear. No, no. I just, so I'm not worried about the all of that. Like in fact, I like all of that stuff I love. And I feel like, yo, if anything, I'm probably sharper now than I was ten years ago with that. You know, because all of that is just all You're of that star, is, is, bro. is all You're of that is act is acting, is you know, your expressions, it's your timing, knowing when to let the bar breathe, you know, and it's intertwined with, with comedy too, which is what I got into in the last two, three years, doing stand up. So all of that is not what I'm worried about. <laughs> but the main, main thing at the end of the day is those bars. Not to be cliche, is 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 that pen? Is 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 the angles? Is all of that right? And and I know you know this is even an ongoing topic within the the culture and the community. It's like when you have like um, performance versus content, right? Performance versus pen. And then of course all of the goats are referred to as goats because they cover all these bases. You know what I mean? Like, for example, when you watch a URL battle and you hear Beasley's voice at the beginning, Arsenal specialties. You know what I mean? When he's like, performance, yeah. wittiness, aggressiveness, <laughs> disrespect. So for me, it's... I'm saying that to you and to everyone that, that is even somewhat curious about where Jin stands on all of this. That's it. It's just uh, the more aware I am of, of, of what would be required to, to get into that state of mind to battle is more the reason why I haven't. You know what I mean? Because if it was just for the bag, man, I would have been on five cards already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not to say that it would have been good. It might have been, you know, pun intended. It might have been disastrous, right? But I would have been on. I would have been on this card. I would have been on that card. You know what I mean. But to me, I think that that's the main thing. Like, I love this. I love this quote. And I'm gonna throw the ball back to you. It's a quote that I, I said one time in an interview, and it's just stuck with me. Um, which is, some people wonder, Yo, Jen, do you feel like you don't battle because you outgrew it, right? Like, you know, you went and did your acting, and you know, we know you've kind of explored all these other things. Do you feel like you've outgrown battling, and that's what is holding you back? I say, on the contrary. I feel like in some way it's outgrown me. You know what I'm saying? Like, which is two very different things. Like I didn't outgrow it. It outgrew me. It's become this amazing, uh, yo, yo, I, I love, I love it now more than ever. As a fan though, that's the thing. Before it was like, I mean, maybe because I'm so engaged in it myself, I couldn't really just watch as a fan. You know what I mean? Even when I used to go and watch battles, whether it was 106, Fight Club, Scribble Jam, smack whatever right i'm watching it as someone who like even though i'm a fan but in my mind i'm still like okay i might battle that guy i might battle that guy how would i rebuttal this you know what's a scheme that i could use on him or an angle that you know what i mean we didn't use the word angles then right but i'll be you know i might be like okay i know this little tidbit about him that i could put in but now when i'm watching you know when i'm watching freaking Gichi Gotti versus a ward or whoever right i don't I don't need to, I'm just purely like, oh my gosh, did you hear what he just said? And 
oh my, you know? So it's, it's, it's so next level now. It's like, it's so advanced, but like, dude, like someone like you, and I wouldn't just say this, man, like I would say this to you in a cab, fucking by ourselves or fucking on the street throwing apples at people. Not, it doesn't matter that we're live or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're a star, so you got it. You, you can name <laughs> You can name all the top guys. Name them. Like the name, name the 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 actual goats, not people's favorite. Like you know, of all time type of shit. Like you know, Hollows and you know what what Mook Lux. Uh, who else? Yeah. You know, all these guys. Charlie Clip. You know that everyone names and stuff of like that. You know, you get your Pat Stay. You know, but you know, you got you got all these guys. You in the mix? Yeah. yeah. You no, know, no, but, no. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying these guys don't have viruses. They do, but they're but they have a star power. They have an aura, they have a yeah. performance, they have a, when they walk in the room, you know who the fuck they are. So, excuse my language, I don't mean to swear so much. Oh, no, um, cool. Okay, cool. As, um, long as, you don't, you, as long as you don't curse in Chinese, we good. <laughs> 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 I'm not good. Now, these guys, like, you know, these guys, you know, there's, there's a difference, like, so, and you have that. Like, bro, I, yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think you would have any problem whatsoever. I think that you would actually smash it because you have that aura. You have, of course, you. That, I mean, bro, you're one of those guys. You're one of the key people that everyone has to name from legendary people. Bro, you're fuck. You're Jin. You're Jin. <laughs> bro, oh, you're, yeah, bro, you are Jin. So like, bro, you will be totally fine. You 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 been running this stuff. You know what I mean? If you came back in. It's you're not. Okay, I don't want to put people down, but um. No, no, no. You know, okay. I, before you get into that, I, I receive everything you said. Um, I I would just add on to your sentiment with there's definitely ring rust, right? And not not just ring rust, but there's definitely um, I would say it's uncharted territory for me. Like, this, th I mean, me and you are basically saying the same thing. I get what you're saying. That at its essence and at its core, you're Jim, and that's already like um, that's there. Like, there's nothing, like, that's kind of, like, got a force field around that you can't. So, I get that. But, but, we can also agree that only means so much when I step on that ring. When I'm no. standing in. When did it back then? Did it back then? You know, when you were winning so much back then, did it, when, when you weren't Jin back then, when you were. At, well, no, no, no. no. Did, but, but I'm, I'm, I meant, what I meant by that is, is the, the. The skill set aspect of it is what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, I, and I think for me, it's, it, it goes back to that. Oh, by the way, I'm not saying I'm, I'm with NWX, by the way. So don't, <laughs> I was just trying to say the X Factor. And I'm not talking about the one from the Midwest either. I just meant the X Factor in this situation. He, he's a dude. He's a dude. He's a dude. He knows. He knows. The X, Factor, the X Factor in my situation is that nobody has seen me in this, in this current realm yet. So there is that. Um, you could call it the surprise factor, right? There is the, what would he bring to the table? And what I mean by that is, even for me, it's that. Like, cause I haven't, I haven't, I haven't taken that, 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 that leap yet off the edge, right? Like I haven't committed and said, yo, you know what? I'm gonna do like, like when, when Hollow and, um, Hollow and Lux, right? They had a two on two and then wasn't part of their whole regiment. They went up to the mountains and they were like, they were like shadow boxing. And that was an amazing two on two, by the way. I forgot who, they battled like chess and it, it was hot. It was, yeah, it was Lux and Hollow versus um, chess and, and Tay Rock maybe or something like that. But my point is I always use this, this, um, this analogy. Like I would literally have to, or I would, I mean, not literal, but I would have to do something in the vein of go up to the mountain somewhere for like six months and leave my family, you know, tell my, give my wife a kiss on the forehead, you know, tell my son, you know, my older son, yo, watch your little brother, he'll, you know, the, the baby, you know, the baby will probably be, you know, walking and talking by the time I come back already. I might come back with 20 rounds. I don't know 20 rounds for who, but, but I would like, I would literally have to go into some like secret dungeon to get into that. And, and I only say that because, yo, I think, Maybe you still underestimate how many battles I've watched. I've watched a lot, a lot of your battles, a lot of everybody's battles. And, and I'm just so amazed by it. That's all, that's my main point. Like I'm so amazed by it and I'm so just, man, so like aware of what it is now that I know it's uncharted territory for me. That's all I'm saying. And I'd have to really push myself to go to that place. 
it's, well, if, it's dope yeah. though. Like I, I love it. You know. If you, if you ever want to do a two on two, we'll keep it on the low. Uh, and, what well, would even What would even make sense? Me and you versus who though? See, I'll entertain this. I'll entertain like hypothetical. You know, what would even be entertaining, or what would be like people would be like, oh, that kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not sure, but. To bring it back, if you were to come back, I wouldn't suggest going against a disaster for two reasons, right? Not yes. because he's so great and, and whatever, whatever, because he is. I actually believe he's the GOAT. But, yes. um, but like, um, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember his name right now, and it's not disrespect. Um, he, 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 uh, Jewish guy, he came back and battled disaster recently. Uno Labos? No, Jewish guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know... <laughs> I like I don't you know like and I think of and I only say Uno Lavos because I do remember at one point like yo I was watching every one of his battles just because you talk about you know someone doing something unorthodox that's um you know like yeah it's unorthodox and and in some cases it's even choppy and sloppy but for some reason at that time the, the Uno Lavos era that I'm thinking of he was like you know, he was gunning in his weird way. You know what I'm saying? That's why I thought of, of, of Mr. Lava. But, uh, but no, Soul Kong. Okay. Okay. Soul Kong went, went, came back and battled disaster last year, I right? It. I watched it. I watched and, it. And, and it was, and it was sad it, it, because for two reasons. Um, I, well, the first reason, because I did the two reasons last time. I think the one thing was Soul Kong is in a, a better place now. He's more positive. He barely, yeah, he barely he barely swears now. He he barely talks about anything, you know, controversial. He's more he's he's in a better place. That's why I like to call it right. Yeah. So he doesn't say bitch. He doesn't say anything, right? So he goes against disaster. Like you gotta be in a like when you battle disaster, you have to know what kind of a cloud you're in at that point. Like you yeah. are a complete target, and he is gonna say the most messed up shit in the entire world that while it's happening, it's going to throw you off because you're like, oh my God, my fan yeah. base is going to hear all this crazy, uh, political, ridiculous, negative shit. And, 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 and then it was sad to watch because he, was, he wasn't ready for that. You know what I mean? You know what, Pat? Let me, let me say something, man. I'm not like refuting what you're saying, but quiet is kept. I think that Soulcon was more aware before the battle, during the battle, and even after the battle. Uh, he was more aware of what was unfolding and happening or what would happen than I think a lot of us realize or are giving him credit for. The, like, not me, but I mean, maybe in the general sense. Like, you could say, yo, it was like sad to watch. And, and I know what you mean in terms of in the context of in the battle, right? But um, I think as I listen to his rounds and as I watch it, Yes, maybe like you can you can kind of pick apart the 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 um the performance aspect of it, the pausing and maybe it wasn't you know all those things. But in terms of what he wanted to say in his material, I felt like it was way more calculated than maybe we all think. And and you know he almost went into it like with more of an agenda of of something he needed to get off his chest. Which I, I you know I, I mean like is that the best way to come into battle with Diz? Maybe not. But to some degree, I, I, I understand it. You know what I mean? Like, not to say he, he, he went on a kamikaze mission, but, you know, he maybe was like, yo, regardless of how this battle comes out and how it's received, these are the things that I need to convey. And, and that's exactly why I took this, because I know I it all the eyes. You know I get I mean? that. I've done that. Yeah. I've done that. And I get it. I get it. But I know that I know 100% that he was totally not happy with that. He was very upset about it. Like, Understandable. Like, Really not cool with it. Like, really, um, you know, I won't say a shame, but, you know, he wasn't um, happy with it. So, yeah. but maybe you're right. Maybe he knew, and maybe, you know, he did what he had to do. But, like, you know, coming from someone who's based on performance and, like, all that type of stuff, I think that, I, okay, I shouldn't say it's sad to watch, but, you know, from someone that had such high expectations, the whole, all the, the whole world was like, oh, this is going to be so crazy and charismatic and well-rounded and really he just kind of stood there and was like you know Diz and I don't mean to put him down because yeah. I care I care about I care about everyone I don't know him yeah. I called him yeah. not too long ago yeah when he said um you had the code for the n-bomb uh you had the the launch codes for the n-bomb see he just needed he just needed like maybe 100 or 150 more of those and it would have yeah. completely yo when he said that you know the room and even me yeah. at home I was like that there you go so right there you go so like 
And then I backtrack a little bit to what you were saying about how um, content wise, he's in a better place and he doesn't, he doesn't use certain vernacular when he's battling now. Right. So, I mean, I want to add a bit onto that. Like, I don't, how do I put it? Like, I think that even though that's like a worthwhile topic to, to bring up, I mean, I feel like that's at this point of, of battling, I feel like that's like almost like, you know, it, it, it could be a water under the bridge you can like not even mention type of thing because if we're talking style clashes man i've seen so many battles where on paper you may be like whoa what is this but then when the battle actually happens you're like ah you know what i mean so for example um switching gears just a little bit right i know that you weren't trying to go in this way but i'm naturally just thinking about it you look at the guys right that are um and i don't know if it was branding i, I don't think it's branding i think these guys really really have conviction with their platforms but i'm talking about um Brothers like Loso, Saga, um, A Ward, right? So mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, Street Hems, I think he's also part of them, right? And then I think uh, even um, there's like a new guy that joined. But point being, so to the collective, everyone's like, "Yo, that's the Horsemen, the the Christian, the Battle is now, right?" So I know that that's something people have brought up to me too, which is you know because um I, I don't want to dive too heavy into it here because our time is precious and I want to cover as much as possible, but. For me, my faith journey, I'll call it that, right, um, was maybe like in the last five years or so, five to seven years that it kicked into high gear. Kicked in, and, and all I mean by kicked into high gear is that, um, yo, it just shifted my perspective. You know what I mean? To put it in a non-religious Kenneth Copeland, you know, the breath of God. Right? It's okay. Like, it's okay. Hey. I'm, I'm, with you. About, I'm with I'm you. I'm talking about. I'm talking about real practical, life changing, perspective changing, and just to clarify, I don't have the answers. You know, people. You know, people still now. You know, they to this day that are like, "Yo, Jen, so why this? Why that? Why would God this? Why would God that? Why is Jesus this?" I don't have all the answers. The only thing I can tell you is I know what my faith journey has done for me. Right. So I, I say that all to trans transition into the, the as it pertains to battling. People have said, yo, Jin, you can come with that, right? Like, meaning they're always referenced. Like, you see the guys like Loso and, and, and A-Ward and them, you know, and yo, all the, I'll take my hat off to those fellas. Because at the end of the day, these guys are on these cards that they're on right now and getting these matchups that they're on right now because they're nasty with it. You know, the, the message is their message. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's to them how they, you know, present it. Because even some people, you know, nitpick about it like that too. Like, you know, to some people, the idea of a Christian guy battling at a URL event is an oxymoron already. You know what I mean? So, sure. so that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it can be like a very convoluted thing. But my thing is, I salute those guys because all I'm looking at is, is their skill, right? Well, beyond the skill, I'm looking at their heart, right? And I can tell their heart really is, yo, they, they have their beliefs and their convictions. Yeah. But then on top of that, they're not just trying to be Christian battle rappers, right. which is the key. Like, like you said earlier about, like, why would you even aim to be on the Asian battle rapper Mount Rushmore? Uh, I agree. Well, you, that shouldn't be the aim. But my point is, if there is one, damn it, they better have me on there. That's all I'm saying. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> if there is one. But, but like, like, like I'm saying, that's not the aim. So for guys like A-Ward and them, I can tell that, yo, their beliefs are very, you know, like, are the core of them. But you better believe that along with their beliefs, when they write and when they come out and they do their thing, is crowd shakers, haymakers, oh, yeah. all of that. But the only difference is, uh, and we won't, we, we don't kind of stay on it though, because yeah. you know, we all believe in God. I mean, you yeah. know, most most of us do. Name like in the hip hop culture community, we believe in God. Like you don't go into a yeah. hip hop zone and a bunch of atheists like fuck God, man, represent the devil. We all are, believe in some God. Some of them are there. Some of them are there, though. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like for SoCon, be like you know, a woman's activist, like, against all the shit that hip-hop yeah. is like, bitch, suck my, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, I want to get into another question, man. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me about the environment of Fight Club. Oh, okay, yo. Um, So I did, I got to be honest, my Fight Club experiences weren't the prettiest, but I, I wouldn't trade them because I think, yo, I, I, I actually pride myself on one thing. I would think that I'm in a small handful of people that have these certain different platforms under their resume. Not to say that, yo, I did a bunch here, a bunch there, but 
I'm proud to say I touched all of these, right? So if we say 106, right, which isn't necessarily like, so 106 is kind of like, it's revered in terms of like, it was one of the earlier big platforms. But between me and you, we know 106 is not where the real sharks are. You know what I mean? Like, like honestly, winning on 106 isn't like, within the battle community, it's not like, yo, I'm a 106 champ. We know that, right? But to the general public, it is, right? So, but, so I'm, I'm just saying, like, I look back on it and it's like, I navigated through the 106, but before the 106, yo, I mean, for lack of better words, I'm proud of the fact that I made my rounds, right? I, I made my way down to Scribble Jam, you know, probably, you know, grinded my way through the first three, four brackets. And, and you know, I don't think I got anywhere beyond the, the semifinals, but yo, I experienced Scribble Jam. You know what I mean? I'm there, I'm looking at the Mac Lethals and the, the, the ADMs and, you know, these guys that I was, I was watching and downloading their battles on, me watching them. So that, and then, yo, I mean, Technically, I did one smack battle before there were events, right? I did a, a smack DVD battle. And I think it totally caught me off guard that off of that one, people were left with such an impression that they have this idea that, yo, Jen, you used to battle on smack a lot. When truth be told, it was just that one. But it's <laughs> enough that when people see me now, they're like, yo, when you going back to smack, right? Like, and, and, and to me, it's just like, I get what they're saying, but the, the connotation implies that, you know, I was there with Charlie Clips and Hollow yeah, and Boone, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because those guys were really in the thick of it. But um, Fight Club, right? So I say all of that to say Fight Club was definitely something that, in hindsight, at the time, it, it was a challenging thing to navigate because, yo, the two fight, I, I did three, let me see, I did four Fight Club battles, like meaning I did four battles that were under the Fight Club umbrella. Two of them uh, were like amazing. Because two of them were like tournament style, um, uh, the the mix show power summit. So that's the one where it's like fifty thousand grand prize and you know a Chevrolet Cobalt, right? And at the time, yo, I was like, I'm gonna take that Chevy Cobalt, you know. And hey, but so that those two, I won, which was great. I you mean, won the Chevy. I won the Chevy Cobalt, and yo, each tournament for fifty k each one. You know what I mean? And and you know, let me pat myself on the back for that because I wow. think there was a point in time where I lost sight of that too. In fact, yo, at one point because I won those two battles, I kind of started going by this moniker Hundred Grand Gym, and and that's where that came from. Like I was releasing tracks under this title Hundred Grand Gym because I was like, yo. Two battles, 100K. And I know that's nothing now. I know, Pat Stay, you get 150 for one. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> that's, that's, big, that's big as fuck, man. That's big as fuck. But, but, but I'm saying, so out of the four Fight Club uh, entity-related battles that I did, those were two of them. Uh, the other two were, yo, I mean, I'm, there's no way to go around it, were probably the two biggest and impactful both in career and on a personal level, L's that I've ever took. One, first one being the Sirius Jones one. So that's a fight club battle. And then the second one was Solomon, right? Yeah. So, you know, so once upon a time, it would have, it would have, I wouldn't have been like, yo, Pat, don't talk about it. You know what I mean? But I definitely would have had to, I would have had to like bite my, grip my teeth as I'm talking to you about it and, 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 and internally feel like all tormented as I'm talking to you about it, even if I don't show it on my face once upon a time. But now it's weird, man. I almost feel like those are my prized possessions, those two L's right there. Cause I think it, it was a process to, 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 to kind of recover and find my way through it. Right. But yo, I learned so much from those two experiences. So I'll start with the Sirius Jones one. So I think, um, one interesting thing about the Sirius Jones one is that that was my first Fight Club battle ever. So I knew of Fight Club, right? I knew of this place where there's the pool table, one guy on each side, you know, and, and all the people are standing in this crowded room, you know, drinking, smoking, and there's judges, and then you battle. And I knew that, yo, at any moment, someone could be like, yo, I want to battle him, and then you just got to do it. So in that case, I knew I was going to battle Sirius. So it wasn't like it just popped off out of nowhere. But I totally, totally... Um, I, I, I mean, the only word I did, I totally slept on and underestimated him. Like I didn't, I didn't take, I didn't take it as serious as I should in, oh, no pun intended there, 
I didn't take it as serious as I should have by no means. Like, you know, I, I you know, I have my little my little pre gaming, like, okay, his name is Sirius Jones. I can probably do a little name flip here and you know, and that that's there. But I definitely wasn't like I wasn't watching the game tapes. I wasn't like, who is this guy? How many has he won? Da 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 da. So Sirius comes in cooking. I mean, to 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 his credit, he was like on a winning streak there already. And he had his he had his signature style at that time, which is still kind of in his repertoire now, but I, I even think he's evolved too, right? Because he's yeah. pretty active in recent years. But even That's if you watch him, shout out to Jones, if you watch his recent years, you still see the the core of what he was 10 years ago, which is when yeah. I battled him. I battled him in like 05, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is like after the Rough Rider album dropping, which is another thing that people always kind of like, you know, they, they, they speculate about too, which is like, yo, why were you even still battling after getting signed? You know, and I think, in my own mind, I just felt like, yo, I love battling, you know what I mean? And then and, and, and I'm gonna do it. And so when I went there, um, yo, he, he was cooking, you know? And, and the thing is, he, he wasn't like saying anything that was particularly groundbreaking or clever. You know, that's kind of my little, you know, that's my two cents. But the way he was saying it, Crush every line, you know what I mean? It's a sarcasm thing. It's like it's, it's a like sarcasm. Alpha his, male. His simplicity in it, you know what I mean? His simplicity in it. Um, and I think the other thing I overlooked on that battle was, for some odd reason, out of all the battles that they've ever done on Fight Club, that was the one that suddenly Fight Club decides to cut a deal with MTV2. So not the main MTV, but you know how they got like a MTV2? with the two behind it, MTV2. Yes, yes, right? yes, okay. yes. So out of all the battles ever, they decide that this is the battle we are going to air on MTV2 nonstop in heavy rotation, like a damn music video, like, uh. like a Ja Rule, like a Ja Rule featuring a Shanti track. <laughs> they had that battle on loop three times an hour, Monday through Saturday, Sunday after church. Like they just had that battle on loop and People was just like, oh, man, it's over for Jim. And uh, this guy said, I I'm looking in the comments, too. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like doing every now. Shout out to Thesaurus, two times. I got to shout him out twice. Shout out to Thesaurus, because, you know, he's two times everything. Oh, yeah. Shout oh, oh, listen. The, the goat, the god, man. How about the guy that's like, Jim, your answers are too long. <laughs> that's my thing. Yo, 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 tell me, has my audio been in and out or has it been fine the whole time? Perfect, perfect. Okay, but yeah, cool. but just, just to kind of like put a cap on it, I, I got like about another five minutes and I'm going to log off. But yeah, so the Sirius Jones was, was one, one experience. And then following that, I also battled, when I battled Solomon, that was, um, that was on Fight Club too. Now that one, they didn't air on, you know, that one wasn't like, a, uh, it wasn't as intense as far as like getting aired on TV again and again and again. But that battle was also an eye opener because... I had heard it. I was familiar with Solomon at the time. But once again, I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think I took it. I don't want to say I didn't take it serious, but, yo, I definitely, I relied on my written, uh, no, I relied on my off the top too much there. Where, whereas if there was ever a time to really dive into my, dive into a, I'm back. If, meaning if there was ever a time to dive, dive into the writing bag, it was against Solomon, for and sure, for sure, for sure. The learned that, too. The source learned that against Solomon, too. <laughs> I think a lot of people learned that against Solomon. You know, <laughs> like, because, you know, because that was a weird time. Like, this time that I'm talking about, yeah. when I was battling him or serious, it was this period where, yeah, where there was starting to become that kind of transition, like I said earlier, going from mostly freestyle with some writings into the other, other way around, which is mostly writings with some freestyle, you know? Somebody just asked in the comments, they say, yo, Pat, uh, how many, uh, oh, shit, it just gave me 26 sec sec seconds left. I got to log off anyway, oh, man. So you're okay. You, yo, check it. Tomorrow we got Sharon and King Lopes, man, so you, I, I know you're going to watch that. As a freestyler, you got to watch that. Thank you so much for coming on, man. God bless you, man. Much love, man. God bless you, too. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, what a great...